So it's an, an amazing, amazing book. Uh, this uh, Tomer Devora literally means the palm tree of Devora. And it was written by a famous Kabbalist, probably one of the most famous Kabbalists, uh, the Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, who was the, um, he wasn't really the Rebbe, the master of, of the Arizal, but he preceded the Arizal in terms of his importance and his in lineage in terms of, of how, of being a codifier of the Kabbalistic tradition. Um, when the Arizal came on the scene, he codified it on a, on a, on a different level. And that is actually what, what is most, most accepted for Kabbalists is, is the, the codification of the Arizal. But much of what the Arizal codifies and how he codifies is based on, on the writings of the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, who, um, who happens to have a commentary on the Zohar, and he has a commentary on um, uh, on many many important Kabbalistic books, and he's probably like again like one of the most important uh, one of the most important Kabbalists. So actually, one of his books uh, that he has is called um, the, the Tomer Devora, the tree of the the palm tree of Deborah. And uh, what's interesting about this book is that it's, it's meant for the layman. It's, it's a Kabbalistic book, which, as we know, majority of Kabbalah is really esoteric and it's really complex and it's not for the novice. But this book, the Tomer Dvorah, is, is very down to earth and it's meant to be very down to earth. It's meant to be actually a book that one could study and refine himself based on uh, these Kabbalistic traditions. Uh, so, so let's begin. So I'm going to share my screen and I think we have, uh, PDFs in English, but, uh, but e even if we don't, um, actually just seeing these words, uh, the Hebrew words are, um, are very, uh, are very important. And, and what you see, what you're seeing over here is actually a script, which is called the Rashi script. Um, so it's so it's not regular Hebrew font. It's a different font, which is called the Rashi font. So let me just give you a, a, a brief intro to what this book is all about. So the, the Tomer Dvora, so it's meant for the novice, right? It's meant for the layman uh, to better their, their, their inner world. Um, and what it's based upon is it's based on the 13 attributes of mercy. And the 13 attributes of mercy we spoke about last week are what the entire month is really all about. This new month of Elul, the new month of, of Elul, there is a, um, there is the, the, the 13 attributes of mercy revealed in, in, in this world. And um, whereas on, for example, on, on Yom Kippur, uh, the 13 attributes of mercy are revealed in a, they're also revealed, right, in a clear way. The attributes of, the 13 attributes are revealed, but they're sort of hidden. And that's why each day of Elul is not a holiday. Each day of Elul is actually a, nor, a regular day. Um, but these 13 attributes of mercy are actually meant to wake us up to our own, um, of what is called avoda, our own inner work for us to kind of like um, yearn and go be, go beyond um, ourselves, right? So whereas it's not given to us, it's right, it, it's given to us in, in a hidden way, but we take from that and we um, we kind of like make it ours. So it, it's it's sort of like. And that when when we when we were kids, let's say your 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 parents, let's say gave you a couple of of dollars to go and buy something, and you buy something out of it, and actually you you make something out you make you make something out of it, make money, let's say out of it. Um, so I right. So the thirteen attributes over here are kind of like this uh, this idea. I just um, just as an aside before I begin, I remember I was in fifth grade. And my parents gave me a couple of dollars, and um, I remember buying a whole bunch of, of cokes, Coca Cola, and I sold it in in uh, in fifth grade, and uh, and came back, and my parents were like, "Oh, wow, <laughs> you know, well, I guess we don't have to give you uh, next week." And and 
So I guess that that is kind of like the 13 attributes of mercy that we're given the ability to, to recreate ourselves. So having said that, let's take a look at this work over there. If you have the PDF in English, great. If not, I'm going to read it in Hebrew and translate it into English. Here we go. Perak Aleph, the first chapter. Ha'adam, man, ra'ui she'idamelekono, is fitting that he should resemble his creator. And then he will be in the, for, in the supernal form of body and soul. Right? So just on this line, really, we have kind of like the secret of, of creation, of, of why we are created. We're actually created to resemble the creator which if we think about it, that is the ultimate greatness. That is the ultimate goodness that a, that a, that a finite being could receive, right? Because the, the, what is the ultimate goodness that a finite person could receive is to be um, like the creator, who is the ultimate of goodness. The ultimate of goodness is, is what is actually to do good, right? And when a person transforms their own inner world and their own desire for um, speaking for the self and being egotistic and for being self-centered and whatnot, and when a person transforms that desire in order to become more God-like, so then a person resembles the creator. And that's what the Ramak opens up. That's really what... Um, what it's what it's all about is to become more godlike and just by the way just imagine if the world was like this people would be more godlike as opposed to being more animal like right then we would be looking at a different world we would be living in a different world we would be living in a world of goodness so this is this kind of like this is the secret of of uh, of, of creation really and he continues shi'ilui dume begufo because if a person would only resemble God in his body and not in his action, so then he is actually um, lying to his, to his inner world, to his inner soul. And they would say about this person that this person has a beautiful form, but his actions are, um, are unseemly, right? And what the, the, what the Ramak means over here is that, that the body, that we're created in the image of God. So every human being is created in the image of God. That is why we're, you know, when we look at a human being, that is an image of God. And Kabbalistically, the body um, is, is, is made up of, 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 of the, the bra brain, the head, right, which is right, right brain, left brain, center. And then we have the right arm, the left arm, the torso, which resembles actually the ten spherot, the ten emanations up above. So the human body in and it of itself rem resembles the, God, the, uh, the godly form. But if the body, it, but if only the body resembles the godly form and the soul, in other words, the soul and what's beyond the soul, the action does not resemble the godly, um, the godly um, uh, semblance. So then, so then we would say that it's a beautiful vessel, but the actions are not the way they should be. Shehare, because ikara hatselem vadmut, because the main... Um, uh, the, the main uh, vi visual part of the body, right? To, um, I'm sorry, the soul part of the body and, and, the, and the body of, of the person. So what will it do for a person if a person just resembles God, but in his actions, he does not look uh, so godly? Lefichach. So the Ramak says, so therefore, Ra'ui she'itame el pe'ulot ha'keter. So therefore, it is fitting for a person to resemble 
the actions of the crown, of the supernal crown of God. And what the Ramak is hinting to is a very, very Kabbalistic uh, term over here, which is the, 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 uh, the level of crown, which act actually incorporates, the level of crown incorporates all the subsequent spherot underneath it. And within the level of crown is actually the 13 attributes of mercy. So let me just explain this uh, briefly before we go on. So the, the person is composed of, on a, on a body level, but also on a soul level of these 10 emanations, of these 10 spherot. So the 10 spherot are godly spherot. But beyond the godly spherot is the level of the, what, what we call the superconscious, and that's the level of crown. Level of crown is, what, what, is the, what is really a crown? A crown is something which is inanimate. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's either golden or whatnot, a, 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 a golden um, um, a bow or, or something like that with precious stones on it uh, that goes on top of the head. And that signifies a level of, of beyond mind and beyond emotions, which is beyond emanations. And, and from this level of crown is in effect where all mercy comes from because a person could could digress and go against uh the way right and 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 really really get lost and bludgeon their uh their godly soul and 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 and, and their body as well so how does a person fix and how does a person overcome uh that that state. So he overcomes that state by connecting to beyond these emanations and beyond the, that place of almost finite. And that is going to a level of, of infinite, which is the level of, of crown. And that is the place of the 13 attributes of mercy. So these 13 attributes of mercy are hinted to, and the Ramak says, he continues over here, Uramuzot besod apsukim, it is hinted in the verses in, in, a book, uh, in the book of Micah. So Micah was one of the 24, we have the 24 prophets, which are called the minor prophets. And, um, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, of the 12 prophets, sorry. They're, which are called the, the minor prophets. There are 24 books in general of the entire um, uh, Bible, what we call them as 12 minor prophets, and he's one of them. And in, in, um, in the book of Micah, this is where we find the 12 attributes of mercy. And we actually mention these 12 attributes, these, sorry, these 13 attributes of mercy also uh, when we read the book of Jonah uh, on Yom Kippur. And, th and this, these are the 13 attributes of mercy. So, mi el kamocha. And we start off the first, in, first attribute of mercy. And what the Ramak is going to do, he's going to go through each and every one of these 13 attributes of mercy. And he's going to pinpoint them to, the, to a person's personal um, uh, inner, inner working, inner world. And how to, how to transform ourselves based on these 13 attributes of mercy. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, this, this, this book uh, and how the Ramak does it and how he pinpoints each, um, each one of these is, is, is incredible. So first of all, let's, let's read what are the 13 attributes of mercy. So, ni, so the first one is, Ni El Kamocha, who is a God like you? No, um, and he doesn't quote it all over here, but Miel Kamocha no se avon velver al pesha le sherit nachalato yashuv yachamenu, yichvosh avonotenu, right? Tashif mitzulot yam kocha totam. And we're going to go through each and every one. Um, uh, so, but before we, we go through each and every one, the Ramak over here tells us that within each person, uh, 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 he has, he or she has to find those attributes within themselves. And now he's going to list them all. So he's going to start off with the first one, the first attribute of mercy. But, but we've, before we, um, we go into this, 
the first attribute of mercy over here. Um, I apologize. It looks like there has been a uh, a um, uh, black uh, blackout over here in in ascent. So, um, but we've got we've got light over here, the light of of Torah and the light of the Ramak, which we're going after. So the first one is Mi El Kamocha, who is like you. More, so the Ramak says that teaches that God is a king that is, um, that is uh, embarrassed or that is hurt. Ne'elav is somebody that is, that is embarrassed or is, or is hurt. And when you, when you embarrass somebody, when, when you go up to somebody and you call them a name, right, or, 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 you, or, or, or even worse than that, so then the person feels something in their heart because, because you just, person just, just um, said something derogatory to me. So what is the basic human trait, right? The, ba- the basic trait that, that all of us feel when somebody comes up to me and says something negative to me, something, something detrimental. So then I want to hit back. I want to say the same thing back to that person. I want to, I want to, right. I want to embarrass them. I want to, right. I want to be, get even and, and, Take revenge. So we say that by God, me El Kamocha, who is a God like you? And that teaches us that God is a God that takes in the embarrassment. So vel el bon ma sheloy chile That he is, he is, he is constantly embarrassed and he's constantly, in, maybe that word embarrassed is not the, the best translation of, of, of this, but he is constantly um, 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 he, he's constantly um, subjected to, uh, to, to, to people's, um, to people putting, putting him down in a sense, right? Because there's nothing that is hidden from God's supernal um, watch. God sees everything. God sees what you're thinking in your mind. God sees everything that you're thinking and, you're, and that, you're, that, you're not, that you didn't even think about, right? What is going through your emotions. God, God knows everything that's going on. There's no moment. There's no moment that a person doesn't receive godly um, spiritual, spiritual energy that is enlivening him. So the only reason why we are um, existing at this very moment is because God's divine energy is, is, is flowing and is sustaining all of existence. So all of existence is dependent on God's, on God's bestowal, free bestowal, right, to, uh, to, uh, to, to everyone. Where nimza shemeolam lochata adam negdo. And what, what happens over here, that really when a person sins and a person deviates against God's will, where does that person get, get, that, get that vitality from? Beotarega Mamish, he actually gets the vitality from God's free uh, flowing sustenance of him. So he uses the same vitality that God is giving to him freely. And he actually does something which is contradictory to God's inner will. The Ibniyocha Adam Chote, and although a person sins, Bekochahu without power, Lomano Mimeno, the God does not hold back that divine sustenance from the person. Ela Sovela Karushbarhu, but God actually takes in that that hurt and that that um um, what, what we what is called in Hebrew when when, when a person uh, when, um, when a person um, is uh, is kofer when a person rejects the goodness of the one who gives it to him, right? It's like the parent that's again that's giving giving um, food to the child and the child uses that that energy to actually to actually do something negative to the parent, right? But the parent keeps on giving. 
And that's God. God is, he keeps on giving free flowing. And he takes it in. And, and a person is still, is still around and he can still continue to, uh, uh, to move. <clears throat> and you can't say that God, if he wants to, God could actually hold back from that person, that goodness, because, a person, because God could actually, in one moment, just dry up a per, his, his, his arm. Like they say stories about in the Talmud, about certain um, sages that, that saw certain negative people. Um, and, and for example, it says about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, that, that he looked at a certain, certain individual, negative individual, and he says he became a heap of, of bones. And he kind of like, he became just a heap of bones. He kind of like shriveled in a second. <laughs> Um, and just, and uh, it's explained in the books that actually what Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai did is he held back from that person the godly flow, and that person just in a second just shriveled up, and he actually just discontinued, um, was discontinued from his existence, and therefore he, right, he died. Right, but God doesn't do that, necessarily. Um, and he says this actually happened at one in, in the in the prophets to uh, to the king Yeravam at one point. God could have said, since you're sinning against me, I could hold back my 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 sustenance of you. But he doesn't do that. He actually takes it in. He takes in that embarrassment. And he continues to do that. And therefore, it says that the uh, Ramak says that God is called Melech Aluv. He's called the embarrassed king, the king that is embarrassed. That's what the that's what the angels call God. They call him the embarrassed king. Uh, Tanya, actually, the book of Tanya um, has quite an analogy about this. It says when a person sins, what happens over here? And he uses quite a graphic analogy. He says, takes the king and he takes his head and he puts him in a toilet bowl when, when, when he sins. He takes, he takes, the, he takes the, the divine energy right, of the king and he sticks him in the lowest place. He, so he takes it to the toilet bowl. That, right, that, that, that's, that's what happens. He, he actually brings down this, this divine this divine uh, uh, energy to the place of the, what we call the klipot, the husks, the negative shells. But nevertheless, this is the, one of the attributes of God, that he is mi el kamocha, that he actually continues to sustain. So that's the first one. And the, and the Ramak takes a very, uh, a very direct uh, lesson to each and every person. He says, so to a person, um, when, when a person does good to somebody and that person um, just, y- y- you see that, he, that they're either taking advantage or they're, you know, they're just not, they're just not, they're just not be appreciating it. So that shouldn't stop a person from continuing to give. Just like God. Don't say, oh, I gave him, and then, I, and then that's it. And then I, I, I can't give him anymore. You, just like God continues to give us vitality, although we're not perfect, we're far from perfect, right? And at times, right, like the Tanya's analogy, we bring God's sustenance down, but he continues to give us vitality. So too, to the other, we should continue to be kind to the other, not, not, on, not just on a limited scale, but an unlimited scale, right? To continue to do good. So the second uh, one of the 13 attributes is nose avon, that God retains sin. No says that he lifts and that he takes in the sin. And he says that the Ramak says, this is actually an even greater 
level of kindness than the previous level, right? Because if a person doesn't do a, uh, a negative action, if a person doesn't take a negative action, he doesn't create a negative um, angel. So it's brought down in the Zohar, it's brought down in the Talmud, many, many places that, that every action that a person takes, he creates uh, a spiritual uh, effect from it. So when a person does something good, they create spiritual goodness. And the words for that is he creates an angel, creates an angel. And that angel actually gives the person, if a person does something good, that angel actually helps the person to continue to do good. It protects the, the person. It says, it says in, in the verse we, um, that the angels will surround a person. A person of goodness is actually protected by their good actions. However, if a person does something negative, he creates a negative angel. And that negative angel is there uh, to, uh, right, is, is, is there to get him, you know, at, at, at any point and at any situation possible, right, it will, uh, it will, it will latch on and it will try to, it will try to, uh, to bring negativity into fruition. So what happens is when a person sins, when a person does something negative in front of God, so then that negative angel is standing over there. So what does God do? So God could say, I could sustain you. Like the first Mida, like the first attribute, God continues to flow and gives us goodness. But now what did the person do? He says, he now, God now needs to sustain a negative angel that was created by this person. It's like you let somebody into your house, but he's like, can I also bring my friend? And I want to bring another friend and another friend. And you're like, okay. Uh, he's like, most people would say, excuse me, you know, uh, I, just, I just invited you for supper. I didn't invite all of your friends, you know, your entire family or whatnot. But, right, so when a person does something negative, he creates a negative angel. So now God has to sustain the negative angel as well, and angels. So what is this attribute, this, the, the second attribute of mercy of God, is that God no se avon, that God says, God continues to sustain not only the person, but his angels, the negative angels. And it's an unbelievable level. Why? The God holds in this sin. Until God has patience. Until the, person's, until the person comes back and repents. And when a person repents, what happens is that that angel now uh, becomes uh, obliterated. Um, and, 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 and its life force is now, is now, uh, tr uh, re re now returns back to its, to its source. So, so that could, that's the first thing that could happen. Or what could happen is that through a harshness and through negativity and through um, pain, um, or he says death, that, then those angels cease to exist. And I think it's brought down, it's brought down in, in, in books when, that when a person goes through certain, certain things and then it, it could be small things, it could be, you know, certain issues, car problems and, 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 and a ticket here and that there. You should know that those tickets are just really a way of fixing that, that negative angel. And that neg negative angel becomes ob obliterated through that, that ticket or through that hardship that a person goes through. So really it's, it's a kindness that a, person, uh, that a person could be able to correct those. So God waits for, that, for the person to, to be able to ob obliterate that angel because of, uh, because of that, that form of negativity. Oh, the third level is that a person will go to purgatory. And in that place, so in that place of purgatory, um, he, right? Um, he will um, correct um, his, uh, his soul. And from, from that place, also, also the negative angel will become obliterated. And that's what uh, Cain said, Cain said, that this sin where he killed his brother 
Hevel, right? He killed Abel. So Cain said, this sin is too great for me to carry. What did Cain say? Cain said that, how am I ever supposed to correct this sin of murder? He murdered half the world, really. That's right. Uh, because it was just him and, uh, him and, his, uh, and his brother. Actually, there was, there was Adam and Eve at that point, so it was really a quarter of the world, but, but the successors of the world. So, um, and God comes to, Ka- to, Ka- to Cain, and he actually puts a mark on his, uh, on his head, and he says, and he says I, will, I will take this on, and for seven generations, Cain kind of like was able to uh, live and not, to, not to, to be subjected to uh, the negativity of the sin. So this level, the Ramak continues and says, in Cain, this is a great level of, of patience that God has. That he actually sustains this negative creature, this angel, for quite a while. Until, until this creature now is just like, is, is fixed. So, so too, the Ramak says, so too a person needs to realize that when a person could act, could do, could do something bad, a person could do something negative to, to, to you. And, um, and you say, he did something negative to me, that's it, I erase him, I'm not going to speak to him, I'm not going to talk to him, I'm not, that's it, I'm going to get back at him, I'm going to, he's an enemy, sworn enemy, and uh, that's it. And, um, you know, we have so many people that haven't spoken to family members that, that, that haven't spoken to their parents and haven't spoken to this and life is so short, but people do it, right? People, uh, people do it, uh, because they are, uh, they're really, uh, they, they can't take the, they can't take in th- that, that this, this person did something negative to me. I, they can't take it in, but the Ramak says we need to learn from God's Mida. God's Mida is to take in the sin. He takes in our sins. We need to take in the sin that other people do to us. So people embarrass us. People do something negative to us. Take it in. Right? This is, of course, not easy. Not easy at all. And it's not natural. But that's how the Ramak opened up. He said on a body level, we look, we look godly. We're made of God. Right? But on, a, but on a but in an inner level we have to re- resemble God. On a soul level we need to resemble God. How do we resemble God on a soul level by acting like He does on a soul level to live up to our spiritual essence? And this is not simple work, but this is the inner work, which is what um, uh, what we need to do in order to resemble God. God takes in the sin of 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 our of of His creations of us. We need to take in the um, the negativity that 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 people um, inflict upon us, and be patient with people. So, very very st- strong and timely advice. The third attribute is the over al pesha. The third one is that God uh, skips over iniquity, neg- and He says that this is this th- these levels are progressively higher. And he says, this mida is gedola. This is actually a higher level. That he says that, this, that the forgiveness of when a person does something negative, so God himself forgives the person. As it says that in front of you, God, is the forgiveness. What is the forgiveness? That God himself, he bathes the negativity. Kedichtivim rachat Hashem etzod benotzion. The God takes the um, the uh, the ex- excrement, basically, right? The the feces. That's the, that's what the, the verse says. He takes the the feces of the daughters of Zion, which are which are the the the, the, the people of Israel and the world, and he takes it, and God Himself bathes. Us, right? As it says, I will throw upon you uh, pure waters. God says Himself, I will throw upon you pure waters. Maim tahorn, the hainu, the over al pesha, and that is what when it says that God Himself 
tra- uh, uh, skips over and 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 and, and right and jumps over iniquity. Sholech mimei rechitza ve'over rechitza pesha. The God Himself sends these and bathes us. And this is what a person needs to do himself. A person can't, shouldn't say, Will I fix what this person did? This person did something negative, and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to help that person fix it. This person fixed it. Okay. So I said, I'm going to keep on smiling to that person. Right? And I'm going to actually take it in. But for me to say that now, I, now I'm going to come up to him and sit him down and say, you know, you need to, you know, I, I know life is hard, but I know, but, you know, you can't keep on acting this way. You need to work on, on, on how you communicate. You need to work on how you're thinking and how you're, act, how you're acting, etc. Why should I get involved? Right? But God gets involved and he himself washes the daughter of Zion, right? He himself uh, does does the work over here? So so too, we also could approach the person himself that does negative to us, and we we ourselves could could um, help that person. And that's the ultimate of goodness. That's the ultimate of a good of a good person. A good person doesn't just okay take it in and just continues on with their work. A good person really wants goodness in the world, so they want that person to also be good and they want that person to be transformed although there's that 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 feeling of of embarrassment that feeling of hurt but if the ultimate purpose is for that is for is for is is for that for for goodness to to perpetuate and for that person to to be transformed so then i need to also do that right it's it's again it's a it's the it's a godly level but that is the, uh, that's the mark. And like when we know the mark, when we know the goal, we've, we kind of know like where, where to set our, you know, the, our bullseye on, you know, where to set the, the marker over here. And, and, that, and that's the marker. So that's the, fir- the third level. The fourth level. L'she'erit nachalato. To the remainder of his in- inheritance. So God could say, you know, um, the people of Israel, and you know, and 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 and, and, and it's like, so what? You know, they're they're my my relatives, and what could I do? Right where it says that 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 we're called the, the daughter and we're called the sister and we're called the mother, right? And the hanu le sherit nachalato lashon sheer basar le sheer sherit is inheritance. The remainder is inheritance, meaning meaning to to the closeness, right? That God feels uh, for for you know the people of Israel and for the for the entire human race um, is that that there's a there's a closeness for so so of him nachalato. Uma Omer Imanishem. So he so God says, Well, if I will will um punish them, so then I will actually have this pain upon me. When a father has to punish a child and has to hit a child, right? If we're talking about a normal relationship, so then the father actually feels hurt from from ha- from having to do that, from having to discipline the child like that. Actually, the, 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 the pain that the child feels, that, that, that the child has, actually goes all the way back up, up to, the, to, the, to, to the father, to the face of the father. So a person needs to look at the interinclusion of each of all of our souls, that we're actually interconnected to one another. And we need, we need to actually feel the inner, the inner uh, pain of actually when, when, when there's a disconnect, right? Because if me and my life, things are fine and things are okay and right, things are good, but for my neighbor, 
things are not good. So I could say, well, what do I care? That's, that's his business and it's his life. You know, if, if we're really spiritual beings and we really want to resemble God and God cares about the interconnection between, between, between all souls, right? So we need to care also about, about the neighbor. We need to care about, about everybody else. And we think about the other because, because of the interconnection that's going on over here. So then my good deed affects that other person's good deed. And that person's transformation, if that person is not holding in a good place, so then that affects me. And I need to, and I need to come close to him or her. And I need to uh, raise, help raise up their consciousness. Um, so, so too... So therefore, a person needs to desire to, 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 find the, to, to find the good of his friend. To have a good eye for, for his person, for, for his friend. Because so often in, in our society, in our world, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the opposite. It's looking, looking at a person says, oh, he's this or, or he's that. And why does he have this? And why does he do, thing, why does he do things like that? And, why, and all these things, right? And I wish I was like that. And I wish it was this. And, 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 and that's not the way to be. That, that's, that's jealous. That's being jealous and that's being small. And that's not seeing the bigger inclusion picture of everything. And when a person has goodness, a person should look, positively at that person and say that's great you should actually have even more good and and god should shower upon that person even more abundance and greater goodness and if the person is not holding by that i i want to i want to see how i could help him reach a greater place of abundance of spiritual and material abundance and to and, and to and to and to be connected uh to him because when i'm connected to him i'm i'm actually not just connected to him i am him because if he's not in a place of abundance i'm actually not in a place of abundance because of this interconnection that the that that all souls has have and the entire world has so pretty much in the state that we're in right now this is like a this is something which is which we um we need to think about um, really all, all the time and 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 the more we the more we bring out that that level of consciousness of expanded consciousness to to everyone around us the more goodness is is going to to, to perpetuate the less smallness and the less negativity uh, is what we're going to see so this is huge, and this is this is the fourth attribute over here, the attribute of of l'sheirit nachalato for for the remainder of his inheritance. The inheritance is is a connection um, that the soul or that the child has with the father, and that the brother has with another brother, and 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 and, and as, as as souls, we're all, and as people, we're all interconnected, and we and, and we need to asap. Um, you know, work on on a deeper level of of interconnectedness and uh, and and to perpetuate goodness. So the the fifth one, and you could actually at this point just say, "Wow, we just have these four levels so far are enough work, enough food for thought, enough homework for us to." Uh, for us to have for, uh, for the next, you know, who knows how long. And really, it's a lifetime process. Um, and, and once again, let's just, just quickly review them. Miel Kamocha has to do with, how, with the greatness of God. Who is like you, God, that you keep on giving goodness and you sustain even if a person does something negative. And so too, we have to sustain um, even if a person does something negative to us. Um, 
we could we we could continue to um, take in that um, that that hurt and embarrassment, uh, just like God does. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, and I think by the way, um, with in terms of raising children, this is probably um, sound advice of under of, of understanding these because in the father child relationship we are in the place of god and um and uh and to realize that we're sustaining our kids but uh, at a certain at a certain point perhaps we're not going to have the child um you know and seeing eye to eye but but we need to continue to be positive and to continue to be good and to continue to um give to them and uh you know not to stop the uh the uh, the flow of love and the flow of communication and the flow of money and the flow of whatever it is right so that's the first level the second level is no se avon that god actually carries the sin and uh, and 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 that is talking about when you're when when the child now brings in his his girlfriend or, or his friend or, or a bunch of friends over to your house and they're the ones that are having a huge party and you're like I could take it from my kid, but like now he's bringing in all these other, all these other characters over. And, um, and that's, that's, that's very tough. And that's kind of like saying, okay, um, to your wife, honey, you know, we're gonna close, close the door and, uh, you know, maybe turn up the TV a little bit and just let this evening just go by. And, uh, <laughs> Or maybe go out for dinner or, or the night and um, make sure that there's a good maid that's going to clean up after the party or make sure that he hires the maid. Um, and that's no savon. God carries the sin. God carries the, 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 our negativity, right? And the third one is Vilver uh, Pesha, that God himself actually washes the sin so that's in the analogy over here that the father and the mother go and they actually clean up the house from the house party that was created they actually because the the the, the second level is that okay i could take you in but you get your own maid you get you hire your own you clean up your own house you, the, the, our house right we let you have fun but on this level over here uh the father and mother themselves are, are sweeping and they're cleaning things off the wall and the bathroom and they're, they're right. Throwing water all over the place and they're getting the stains out of the couch and, uh, and everything. And, uh, and God does the same. He actually, he actually cleans our mess. And the fourth one is Lesherit Nachalato to his inheritance. And that's a deeper level of connection. Well, why is that? Why does God take us in like this? Because we're his children. And, 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 and we have an interconnection with him, a deeper spiritual connection with him. And, and, we, and, and when we understand this, we have a deeper spiritual connection with our, with our friends and with the rest of, of the world. And and just like with our with, with with God that He has this this deeper deep connection with us a deep innate connection with us so too we need to feel that innate connection with, with spiritual spiritual connection with all of creation around us and that's to the remainder of His inheritance <clears throat> right this is uh, incredible and now we're going to go on to the fifth level and the fifth level over here is lo hechzik la adapo that god will not hold his fury uh forever and what is this uh attribute about zumida acher this is a, a different level and um machzik af that god does not uh hold revenge or hold or bear grudge That even if a person keeps on doing the same negativity, the person keeps on stumbling, keeps on falling and doing the same 
mistake over and over again. God doesn't take revenge on him. So, right, it's like that child that the father could say, oh, remember what you did a month ago? Or you remember what you did two years ago? And I cleaned up after you? And he kind of like, you know, he kind of like brings that up. So he's, so he did all those things and he washed the house and he, and he took in the, the, the guests and whatnot. But he's still burying, a, he's still remembering it. It's still there. And he's bringing it up. And, you know, he was washing that. He's washing it, but he, he felt it a little bit. So he says, that's not the case by God. Although a person transgresses, God does not hold his, his, his anger to, to the person. Um, like we find examples in the prophets about the, the, the king uh, Yeravam, that um, that although the, the the people of the north, northern kingdom of Israel kept on doing idolatry, God had uh, mercy upon them, and He actually didn't bear a grudge for what they did. And in fact, it's the opposite. Not only does He not bear a grudge, but He actually becomes less angry. That although the person sits, God does not does not um, uh, does not doesn't only not punish or get angry, but he says, "Oh, maybe that person will now return. Maybe that person will now have have a positive thought, and that person is actually going to transform their lives. Right? They're going to get like rehabilitated, and maybe this, for example, this this idea of the child." you know, is going to actually, maybe this year is going to be the year that they're going to totally transform and they're going to make it. They're going to like hit the big leagues, right? And, uh, and that's what God does. God, God awaits that moment that that child, that us, that, that is, is actually going to live up to their inner, inner self, real self. And he doesn't get angry. Doesn't say, doesn't keep on, on thinking, oh, year after year, oh, it's getting worse. And now, you know, we waited all these years, we spent all this money, we did all these things, and God says, no, I'll, 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 I'll wait up. And uh, so the, the Ramak says, so, so too, uh, a person could, 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 could see a person acting in a reckless way. And, and, and sinning and, 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 and being negative uh, to others. So a person shouldn't look at that person and say, and say you know, I can't believe that person. And, and, and it's just, it's going on and on for years and years and years. And it's just like a waste of, waste of life. And that person is never going to make it. That person is just going to stay like that forever. It says, no, that just like God, he doesn't bear a grudge. He actually waits for the moment, waits for the day. So, so too, we have to say, wait for the day and have patience. And, um, and in education, you know, I, I taught special education for, uh, for a number of years. One of the prerequisites for uh, teaching in special education, and this is something which I've done um, and have seen, with all types of, of exceptional students um, to have patience with them. And it's, a, it's, and it's absolutely pre prerequisite because you're thinking at the beginning of the year, how is this student going to, um, to function or how are they going to learn? How is this going to work? How is this relationship going to continue? But you have to believe that that person is changeable. And it's brought down in many uh, books and in, 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 in educational theories is 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 that is is that in order to um, to teach any any student you have to believe that 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 student is is educable that that person could actually change that person could could become a uh, a student could could transform to become something so that is one of the attributes of God which is um, God. Uh, 
uh, waits for the day um, and, uh, and has patience with us and doesn't get angry. And that's the fifth, the fifth attribute. So that's five out of 13. So please God, next week, we're going to continue with, uh, with the rest of the, uh, of the, of the 13 attributes. Um, either we'll finish them, either we'll work on the uh, part of them or continue on to an, to the, to another week, to a third week. Um, but I really believe that, that, that this book is, is one of the deepest, most fundamental books in, uh, in, in Kabbalistic thought um, and practical, really, really practical on so many dimensions, so many levels. And, and um, by, uh, by really taking time to work on this, right? It, you know, it's not a one, two, three thing, but to really think about this, to really think how, how God gives us vitality every single second. God takes our negative creation, cre creatures and creations that we've created and he sustains them, right? And, and God is, is, is himself wa washes us, right? And God cares about this interconnection that he has with us. And, um, and he's not angry and he has patience. So, so too, we have to do the same to others. We have to rise above our ego, rise above our natural inclination, what we've seen either growing up or what, what we, our, our inclinations are like, and not to believe like the way I am is the way I am, and that's it. And that's the way my father was, and that's the way my grandfather is. No, who's really my father? Who are you really meant to be? We're meant to be God-like. So we're meant to go beyond our, um, our um, makeup and our nature, in our right and uh, where we grew up, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we're meant to, to ease into and to develop into this godly, um, into our godly selves, really. And that's that takes work, and that takes um, you know really a lot of a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, of praying, really. You know, when we ask God for for assistance, for divine assistance for this. Because we can't do anything on our own. We need the divine assistance to, 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 so we could tap into this divine uh, spark within ourselves as well. Otherwise, uh, it, it, uh, it really doesn't go. And, uh, and by that, we perpetuate um, goodness in the world and we become more godlike. And, uh, and, we, and we bring more godliness in the world. So... To be continued, and uh, and God, God willing, next next week. Uh, so I want to wish everybody a uh, a, a very beautiful uh, a weekend, very beautiful Shabbat, and we should have blessings and success, and uh, to incorporate all these all the all, all all this information and um, and to take and to take advantage of, of everything that this amazing month of Elul, it's a month of, of opportunity has in store for us in terms of the 13 attributes of mercy Amen. Oh, god bless and uh and shabbat shalom shabbat shalom shabbat shalom everybody and um and uh so rachel steve uh I ilana we had uh, what, a great, what a great lecture wow yeah, it's all, it's all there. It's all in the book. It's all, it's the, it's, it's, in the, it's in the books over there. But we're gonna get at the, the PDF, please God. And I'd like to create like a Hebrew English PDF because this, this, this book is like key, really, just to like really just so much, okay. so much inner growth. Crazy, yeah. Yeah. It's right, so, right, direct hit, like a direct hit. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, this this is uh, the the Ramak was like not not mincing. He's like, I'm gonna write a book and it's gonna. When when the Arizal came to Tzfat, didn't the Ramak kind of say something like, "I only you can like success me." Well, no, Something not exactly. Like he said he said that uh, his students said, "Who's going to be our successor?" And 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 uh, they said, and he said that 
um, when I pass away, um, if, wh whoever sees this great light uh, above my coffin will be the successor. Wow. And, uh, and that was That's the, so the, amazing because hearing this, it's like who could, you know, follow this person who could be this person's successor. And yeah. it's the Arizal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 that's, and the Arizal said that everything, everything, everything depends on our work, inner work of ourselves, of the midot, of our attributes, of our, you know, and it's brought down that a person can't have Torah learning in a vessel that's, that's, that's full of holes. Right. Because everything's going to flow out. So, so too, our midot, our attributes have to be perfected and have to be worked upon in order for any Torah study to, to, to come about. So the Arizal was so saintly, was so full of Torah and holiness, and everything like that, because of, because of their inner midot, of their, their inner world was, was something that, that, they, that they so much, they were, I mean, they were saintly. I mean, godly beings, right? And we could look at ourselves and say, oh, we're so far away from there. And the truth is we are. Right? <laughs> but we have, to begin so, we have to begin somewhere. And we have to acknowledge at least that, 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 that this is the goal. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. This is, this is the goal to, to, to become more, uh, more godly and to o overcome our pettiness and smallness. Yeah. Wow. So, Mazel tov. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, Steve today's my birthday. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve. <laughs> Today's your Hebrew birthday. Thank God, yeah, Ilana, and I want to give you a blessing for a year of success and a year of atzlacha and a year of everything that your heart's desire should you should should be should be fulfilled and uh, and it should be just for the for the good and really we should see this year just a year of Mashiach, a year of goodness and 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 uh, and, uh, and spend success for live Kabbalah and success because uh, you know it's really coming and only really uh, you know we should see this interconnection really like that fifth mida. God bless you, uh, Ilana. And, uh, you know, for all, all goodness of just interconnection between all souls. And it, and it really comes through spreading of, of Hasidut and spreading of, of, of inner Torah, uh, to, uh, you know, to everyone that we see really. And, uh, and and by 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 doing that, we bring about the the inner intention of uh, of what the big uh, big boss has in mind. So anyway, so stay tuned, God willing, for big things, great things from uh, from Live Kabbalah, not not just from everyone that that's going to be involved over here. We're we're really um, amazing stuff is really happening right now. We created a video, like a promo video. And it's crazy. You're gonna you're gonna love it. It's it is a crazy video. Wow! I yeah. want to see it. Yeah, it's it's an it's an unbelievable promo uh, for it. And we're at currently building the site right now, and uh, and uh, putting together other lectures. Going to be like we have like meditation classes filmed over here in Cla in in Sfat, like beautiful professional meditation things going on. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, very, very exciting. So, Amazing. all of you, all of us, and uh, so God bless. Okay, good Shabbos. Good, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos, good night. Good night, good night, everybody. Good Shabbos, Steve, and good Shabbos, Ilana. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.